Hello, everyone. Thank you for stopping by in my little humble, very humble home studio. I love these kinds of videos because I get tons of inspiration. Um, no matter what video I'm watching, no matter what conversation I'm having with whoever, I always get super inspired just by all of the content out there for guitarists and even specifically worship guitarists, which is the realm that I'm in. And so I hope you get something from this. I hope you get inspired like I am whenever I watch these kinds of videos. Um, I felt like there is a small lack in some of the pedals that I specifically have of information out there on YouTube. And I just wanted to make a video and spread the knowledge that I've gained over quite a few years of playing in houses of prayer and playing in churches for quite a while now. Um, I think I really dug in into it in 2018 when I moved to Kansas City. And um, yeah, I've been doing it, going all in pretty much for five years. And so I've learned a lot about the pedals that I have. I don't like changing a bunch of pedals and buying new ones and exchanging them. I like having a ready to play pedal board that does a lot. And so this, I feel like is perfect for that. It does a lot and lots of sounds can come out of it. So I hope you can get something from this and maybe this inspires you to get one of these pedals. Um, but if not, hopefully it'll inspire you with some sounds and maybe you can find those in, in your own pedals that you already have. So let's get into it. I'm not gonna bore you guys with patch cables and buffers. Um, maybe I will, I don't know. I haven't really thought this out a ton, but I'd love to just walk everybody through it and walk everyone through what's going on in my brain when I'm uh, thinking about worship. So first, I'll just start off with my guitar. This is a Mexican Telecaster. I've had this for, I think 2017, since 2017. It is um, relicked by myself. The uh, Got the old belt buckle scratch on here. I took off all of the polyester or whatever the clear coat was that comes on it. Um, didn't do anything to the neck, um, even though the neck is super sticky. I just haven't done anything to it yet. Maybe that'll be a video. I have put Lawler El Reyes, El Reyes um, the humbucker in the neck position, and I love it. I love bright neck pickups. I think most of the time in Telecasters, they're too warm and too dark and too jazzy, and I don't play jazz. I can't play jazz. Maybe I will someday, but I can't right now, so. That's why I went with this brighter pickup. I love the way it sounds. Um, then this is the stock bridge, and I love this bridge. I love the twangy, bright, even gritty sound that even growly sound that comes from um, Telecaster bridges. And so I left this thing in here and I'm gonna leave it in here for a long time because I love the way it sounds. And of course, as everybody knows that um, that Telecaster pickup is just, it's amazing. <laughs> Um, over here is a super cheap um, Firefly Strat, also Relic. I love the, the way Relic guitars look. Um, but yeah, this one is very heavily Relic. And yeah, I love this guitar too, but it's pretty cheap and it needs more fret work. Uh, I've already had a friend do fret work on it and it needs more fret work done on it. So that's why I'm not playing it today. But it sounds pretty good for crappy, cheapo stock pickups. Anyways, so first in my pedal chain, we go with, uh, also, I don't know if this is important, but I've got the, uh, what is this called? Strap Lock by Dun Dunlop. 
So this is the strap lock. It just pops in. It's super nice, especially playing live and then playing in houses of prayer and having to play for two hours and then go to the bathroom in the middle of the set. I could just click it off. It's really nice. I love it. So first in my chain is my tuner. This is what it sounds like when it's on. And this is what it sounds like when it's off. It's just, it's a tuner. It's all it does, folks. It tunes your stuff. Polytune, then into the compressor. This one just adds a little bit of twang. And I'm, I'm gonna leave my ACS-1 amp simulator off for now until I get to drives which is next, so. Compressor, this is just adding, this is adding no gain. I keep my compressor at unity gain. I don't think it's really beneficial to use your compressor as a boost. I have other pedals for that, so you could do whatever you want, but that's what I do. I have the blend knob at about a quarter. I don't like a lot of compression um, because I feel like it doesn't breathe very well if you have a ton of compression, it's pretty squashed. And the more you turn on drives, I don't want to have to turn off my compressor if I turn on drives because then I lose a lot of breathing room. It's all like squash if I keep my compressor on. So sustain is halfway, blend knob is only a quarter way up. I have it on the humbucker setting, which to my understanding is an attack on how the compressor works. So the humbucker is a very fast attack and the single coil is a slow attack. Um, my level is at unity level, so you can hear it. So this is my compressor off. It's a compressor, just a little bit of squash. So just a little bit of squash, giving that sustain and all that good stuff. So I'll turn my amp on. I'll give this without my compressor. I'll show you what my amp is. So I just have a little bit of room volume on this. It's about a quarter at the room. So I'll turn it off. Totally dry. A little bit above quarter. It sounds like a lot. I'm actually going to turn that down a bit. So we've got a quarter um, room knob. Um, I'll go through my settings later, but this is my, just my clean tone. Pretty dirty. Neck pickup. Pretty dirty. And then with this compressor on. Um, and again, I'll go, I'll go through the settings later, but that is the, um, that's my amp. Okay, so we've got our compressor down. After my compressor, I believe I'm running into this which is, an, I painted it, but it's an octave pedal. I can't remember the company name because I painted it. I'm sorry, but it's an octave pedal. And it's a lot more, it's actually pretty cool. I'll, I'll show you what it does here. Um, it's very organ-y sounding, very digitally org organ sounding. It's got a blend knob, so this is the octave blend knob. Turn it up. And then it's, so basically it goes, this is the single octave and that this is sub octave and this is unity. So it kind of turns into a, almost like a chorus, but it's mono. So. Now it's sub and you can do some really crazy stuff with this. Pretty cool. So I'll take that back how it was. 
And... That's how it was. Just a little bit off. And then we're gonna, this is the double octave. Then we got seventh. Pretty cool. Then we've got sixth, which is gross. And then fourths. Oh, I'm sorry, maybe it's not fourths. It's seconds, actually. Nope, I think it's thirds. I can't remember. I'm not going to figure it out. It's a waste of time. I don't ever use that, so. I just use the octaves and the sevenths. And I'll show you what I do with the sevenths. Um, I'll show you that later when I do my funky sounds. So, that's my octave. It's typically like for lead lines, as everybody knows from watching David Hislop's video. But uh, next to my pedal chain, it's going to be my drives. So it's going to be the protein. Um, everybody knows the protein. I'm not going to explain it. It's got a blues breaker and a noble RD1, RD1, RDS1, something like that. It's got a blue and a green side. That's all, that's all you got to know. So blue and green side, blues, blues breaker. I pretty much have this thing almost always on. It just gives a little bit boost and a little bit of gain. Just a little bit, not a ton. it's like and then we've got green side and then we've got both together turned on got the super bolt this is the v1 a lot of people like it in this down heavy gain position but i recently have really been enjoying this uh, it's not low gain but but basically standard gain uh setting and this is It gets like kind of tinny. It's definitely more mid-driven, a little bit tinnier, a little bit brighter, definitely gainier and loudier. And then my favorite combo is gonna be the Super Bolt and the Blues Breaker side on the protein. So we've got, those are all my game stages. Of course we could do the mash of everything together. Lots of gain. 
Lots and lots of gain. So I'll just leave the blue side on because I love the blue side. <laughs> Volume pedal is going to be the Dunlop. Um, this is the 8 inch one. It's the X8. Super awesome. Um, love this. It's just the right size for my foot. The other one they have, I think it's the six. It's too small for my foot. And it's got like, so it's so easy to give. And it just like, it's wide open all the way, all the time, every time I touch it. So I use the Dunlop. Um, the eight inch one's better, so. Okay, so next is gonna be the Emperor V2. And this is by far one of my favorite um, chorus vibrato pedals ever. Um, it can be stereo. I don't like the wet dry thing it does in vibrato. So I just leave it in mono. It still sounds awesome. And I've got plenty of width with stereo delay, reverb, and running two cabs at the same time. Or two amps at the same time. So... I'm okay with it being mono. I'll give you a quick demo of how what this sounds like. I'm gonna put it on my standard setting, the setting that I like the most. Um, this is my one of my favorite settings. I turn the volume knob off, down a little bit. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, and then you've got the chorus. And I'll turn this on to my, my standard chorus sound. And then we'll, I'll kick on some, some drive. So you can get the... <laughs> Typical heavy drive 80s sound with that chorus. Super good. Okay, so... Next is the fun stuff that I'm sure a lot of people are more interested in is reverb and delay, especially in the worship world. A lot, a lot of reverb and delay is used, so we're more excited about that. So I'll go with my delay first. As you can tell, I have two of the same pedal. You're probably wondering why. The GFI Specular Tempest is my favorite, by far my favorite, and I haven't used a lot of the newest stuff, like those big boxy white ones, I can't remember what they're called. They're like, they're replacing the, the big sky in the timeline, but um, different company, not the same company. But anyways, I haven't used those, but I have used quite a few of the stuff that is, um, that was readily available at the time back in like 2018 to 2020. Um, but up until then, I haven't used really any new kind of um, delays and reverbs. So, but regardless, this is my favorite. I love these. They sound amazing. There's tons of customizing that you can do on um, the platform that you could download on the computer, um, on my MacBook. I love it. It's, it's amazing. Um, I've got this triple switch and it's set to my tap tempo so I can set however fast I want. The only thing that I really don't like about this pedal, it's the only thing, only downside. Maybe there's two, but I won't share the second one. First one, the uh, biggest downside is it doesn't go below 60 BPM. That's it. And you know, it's, it's a bummer. It only goes to 60 BPM. Some songs are like 58 that we play. And um, 
and I want, you know, standard dotted eighth notes, but I can't get that. I have to get like those really fast, just basically dotted 16th notes in those songs, or I have to do switch to a, um, an eighth, just a standard eighth note. And then if the song is going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I have to kind of do an eighth note by myself. And it's still kind of like sixteenths. So anyways, I'm going back. We're just going to do a standard. 65 is always good. So this is my, um, it's my small, I'll just, I could explain this also. This small tape, dotted eighth, tape echo. It's the type of delay that they use. Big tape, dotted eighth, so you can hear the difference. of lots and lots of stuff there so so I'm gonna show you now my um, swells it's pretty self-explanatory it says swell on it so let's, let's just get into it um, cool um, and it I mean if you want to hear what it sounds like without anything on it all right that's enough it's a lot um, the next one I have is dual dotted to dual dot delay and actually that's wrong it's it's not dual dotted. Well, maybe it is dual dotted, but it's just, it's not dual delay. It's actually just one delay <clears throat> and it's just panning right to left. So um, that one is fun for like, um, A lot, a lot you can do with that one too. Um, you would just. <laughs> Lots of cool stuff you could do. Um, and, and this is even without reverb. So these delays fill up a ton of space. Um, even my s small tape delay, even my, um, like my tapes fill up a lot of space. Um, and I do this for a reason because I don't always use a ton of reverb. Um, and sometimes I don't even use delay. I'll just use small reverb and some delay. And so like even my, So, 
as you can hear, even my small tape delay fills up a lot of space because I just like space being filled up by delays. It sounds cooler to me than reverb. Reverb is just that like large space sound and shimmery space sound and it's kind of cliched nowadays, especially with the big sky. Everybody had the big sky and a lot of people still have the big sky. And I just think it's kind of, that sound is a little bit overused in, in CCM. Um, so with that being said, let's get on to my reverbs. So, and by the way, this, this is kind of my bank up and down on my pages. Um, and then this is my toggle to select each one. So bank up and down, and then I can pick the left, the, the A or the B side, the left or the right side. So, um, I'll turn this off for now so I can just give you guys a small, this, um, so I'll, I'll just start with my reverbs. Um, this is also my page bank up and down. You can see the non-accredited Bible college I went to. Um, this is the small hall, small plate. It's kind of a room, but it's more of a hall sound. It's more of a hall than, a, than really a room. Um, but it is a room, a uh, reverb. Um, this is kind of my hangout spot. It's just kind of where I mess around, jam around. Small plate. It's got a pretty long decay, but it's somewhat small. Medium plate. And then, so this is, they both say medium plate, but one is left is smaller. Um, not s necessarily smaller, but um, just there's more blend. Um, so like for this one, it's on 20, 20% 20 blend, which is kind of a lot. And this one's on 25. So it sounds, it's quite a bit um, touchy with the percentage that you go up in, but, um, but yeah, this is my, Pretty big, big spatium. And then on the right side, it gets bigger. So it's pretty big. Um, and then we have bloom verb. This one, this one is like, it's a swelling reverb, but I call it bloom. And it kind of gets bigger and bigger as it goes on, as it tails off. So you can really hear that it starts kind of low. And I think it's great, it adds a ton of attack, so I can just kind of rip it and... And then you get that David Hislop perfect storm that he always talks about, of reverb just crashing into the, the amps compressing a ton and distorting. So this next one is my upper room. 
it's a shimmer and I actually crank the room on here and I'll, I'll show you what it sounds like without cranking the room. Pretty big. And it just, it adds a little bit of like, I want to say thickness to the reverb sound. That's typically what I do. And then. So that's the um, that's the upper rim shimmer sound that I like to do, um, and then we have the RV5. So it's just a modulated reverb. It's a very long decay. Now this reverb, uh, it's called Vortex. It's like a it's like a resonator and the resonance kind of goes up and down. You can hear it. And it kind of shifts a little bit. I can exaggerate that. Um, quite a bit actually. We'll turn this down, we'll just turn this up so you can really hear. And you can you can kind of hear that it it almost like cuts out the reverb because it's kind of like going up and down, fading in and out. I love it, it's such a cool sound. This is anti-shimmer, so this is an octave, a sub-octave shimmer instead of a, you know, normal octave shimmer. I can um, pair that with my swell and it fills up a ton of space. It's like, it's insane. Just. Pedals down. Pedal down. a lot and it gets really messy too so I gotta be careful with that one uh, 70s big oops oh I'll show you that one later so it's just a 70s plate is what they refer to it's just a plate uh, it's big <laughs> that's about it so this one I love um, this one is called Echoes, and it, since these are both the same pedal, I can both I can do delay on both of them. And this one, we'll set this at seventy. And so I'm pretty sure that this is just. So it's this one is a dotted eighth, and then we'll go into dual dotted, which is going to be quarter notes, and we'll tap in seventy. Okay, we're just gonna dial in 70 because I can't tap it. 
So there's 70 and 70 matched up. It's a lot. It's pretty cool. So I don't even have to use reverbs um, when I'm running two delays and I, I didn't copy this. I copied, or I didn't make this up. I did copy it. I copied it from a guy which I'll, I don't remember his name, I'm sorry, but if you ask for it in the comments, I'll put it down there. Um. Pretty beautiful. Um, love that sound. Um, so now I can just give you, I can give you some typical ways that I would combo these. Um, I think 78 is that one song. All right, just gonna tap it in. I'm really struggling to tap in from memory today. So that one song, Be Lifted Up, I think that's called. That's that intro to that one song and I can even bump it up a little bit, or a lot of it. Oops. Typical, typical worship songs. Um, and then I'll give you guys some of my cool sounds um, that I love to do. Go back to my small tape. And we'll turn on vibrato. Make it really funky. I'm just gonna double up whatever the tap tempo is. And I'm gonna add that seventh on there. So it's already a weird sound, definitely.
weird sound. Um, but then I can also do some pretty pads. I'll turn the vibrato really low and then I'll just add an octave and then I'll turn my tone knob down quite all the way pretty much. So pad-esque. That's, that's my other weird sound, pad weird sound. Um, and then I could also do this really cool thing. So I'll turn it onto the square wave and it kind of acts like a tremolo at this point. Turn the depth all the way up. Two, three, four. idea and then lastly of course is the amps so left side Fullerton it's gonna be the uh, it's gonna be the fender um, and this is with the new update I run these I run these pretty hot um, like as you can hear I have no compression, no boot, nothing. Like that's, that's as clean as it gets. And now we're like getting into breakup territory. Now we're in breakup territory. Like I can hear it crunching at the top. It's pretty dirty, there's no drives on, no boosts. Pretty good crunch. And then the right side is going to be the Dartford, which is the Vox AC30. And this one's hot. Running them, you know, past noon. Um, and noon itself kind of breaks up a bit. I'm going to let you guys see what these settings are. And you can copy them yourselves. So that's going to be the the Vox side. You can screenshot that if you want. I'm not a gatekeeper for tones. 
Um, whoops. Fender side. Fender side's a little bit louder. Yeah, I run the boost low on that one because I already get a lot of low end. Uh, yep, and that's the fender side. You can screenshot that one if you'd like to copy. <laughs> pretty dirty if I don't say so myself and I do that because I can run I don't have to run a crazy big reverb like yeah it's pretty big but regardless I can run a semi large reverb And I can get a ton of that David Hislop Perfect Storm. So that is my pedal board. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Hope you got some inspiration. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, love having conversations about pedals and guitar stuff and all that. So see you next time.